In the early days here, we were back over in uh, the HV campus. I mean, we were learning how to do things, man. And, and there were, this God was saving, I mean, there were just people smoking, you know, on the, on the front thing, like asking people for lights on the way in. I can't tell you how often people were like, hey, pastor, there's people smoking on the, they're, they're smoking in the parking lot. I'm like, yeah, and they're doing cocaine two weeks ago. We're going to give them the cigarette. <laughs> I'm just going to be glad that they're here, glad that Jesus is working in their life. And we're not going to be like, hey, you shouldn't be smoking. Yeah, okay. But you know where he's come from? Do you know where they're coming? Do you know what they've been through? Guys, what you're looking at as something that's hypocrite, you got no idea where they've been. You have no idea what they've been through. Now, you want grace for you, you better give it to somebody else. So I wanted you guys to hear from the, the horse's mouth. I wanted you guys to hear Matt Chandler actually say what he said word for word. Now, with this video, I want to deal with Matt Chandler's erroneous view on grace in light of habitual sin. Now, in the beginning of the video, Matt Chandler speaks about the early years of his church and how members would come up to him and basically snitch on other members being outside the church smoking cigarettes. Now, Matt's response was, and this is word for word, yeah, and they were doing cocaine two weeks ago. Now, I don't believe Matt Chandler was joking. He's a funny guy and he tends to joke a lot, but I don't believe he was joking with that. Uh, now, the reason I believe he was being honest with people doing cocaine is because at the end of the clip, he deals with the struggles people have and the things they are going through in their lives. Now, we need to understand that the struggles in your life do not give you leeway when it comes to sin. This is a nature issue, okay? If you have become born again, you have received a new nature and by which a new heart through which new desires flow from. Okay, so we can't we can't use it's something that he's going through because he's struggling in life. You're either lost or you're saved, okay? And now with that being said, we also need to understand that there is a difference between struggling with sin as a born again believer in Christ and being a slave to sin. OK, and when I say being a slave to sin, I mean the act of habitually committing sin with no spiritual conviction unto which leads to repentance. See, you'll have a lot of people who will will say that they're, they're a Christian and they're struggling with sin, but really they're a slave to it. OK, and it's just a, a habitual part of their life where they have no power over and they're completely slave, a slave to that particular sin. And so let's not get that mixed up because you need to understand the difference in struggling with sin as a born again believer in Christ and just being an outright slave to it. And if someone is doing cocaine, okay, they're not struggling with sin. And one of the reasons why this is so dangerous, the way he presented this, Matt Chandler uh, presented this in regards to giving them grace, okay, is because you've given them, you're giving them leeway, okay? And, and instead of giving them grace, the appropriate response from a leader of a church, a pastor, a lead pastor would be church discipline. You need to deal with that issue. You don't just say we need to give them grace because their life is hard. You don't know what they're dealing with. And if you want grace, you better give them grace. That's not what grace is. OK, grace is not encouraging sin. It's not patting someone on the back and saying, yeah, I know life is hard. Keep on snorting your coat. But but just, you know, just just try to do better. No, listen, if you want to get to heaven, there must be sins that you kill. OK, if you are a Christian, you have a testimony in which you can look at your life before conversion and say, I no longer do that. OK, now what what is the appropriate response from a leader of a church in regards to a member who was doing cocaine church discipline? OK, why? Why is church discipline important? Because Galatians 5, 9, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Listen, let me paint it. Let me paint a picture for you. OK, that that scenario. Let's say the member in the church, uh, Matt Chandler's church is doing coke. That member. Right. He, You know what he does and you know what happens and you know why it's important to deal with people like that in the church? Because if you let that go, that member who's doing coke will get other young members who are also lost. OK, and impressionable. He'll get them to take, 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 take. Uh, listen, I could just see it. Right. He tells another member, hey, come on, let's, you know, come over to my house over the weekend. And we'll play some video games, kick it, hang out. That member comes over and that member pulls out a plate and he's got Coke on it. And the other member's like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we should be doing cocaine. And the other member says, man, you know, Pat, Matt Chandler, he's, he's cool with it. He knows that I'm struggling with it. You know, he knows I need grace. He knows I need grace, but it's a struggle. He's OK with you, too. You know, you just need grace, but you can do it, you know. He's cool with it. He's not tripping. So why should we trip over it? Go ahead and take a bump. Right. I mean, that's I mean, that's 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 how you that's how he deals with it. That's that's my interpretation with what he says 
when he says that they just need grace when they're doing hard drugs. Okay, we need to love them. Okay, now, Tim Conway is a great example of the appropriate way you deal with this. I remember when uh, it was found out that a member of the church was listening to secular rap music with cursing in it. They dealt with that member. They didn't just say, we, he just needs grace. We need to love him. We need to pray for him. No, they dealt with that, okay, through a process of church discipline. He was, that member was approached, okay? Um, and what do you think would happen if they found out a member was doing cocaine? Okay, so... We need to understand the difference between struggling with sin and being a slave to sin because it's important. It's it's life or death. And I think Matt Chandler was wrong in his dealing with this and his own view about it. I think he thought he was making a point, but he really just looked really foolish. Uh, so, yeah.